Tyrese Halliburton over the past two years has been one of the most exciting and dynamic point guards across the league. But this week, he's about to make his postseason debut. And the question is, how will Halliburton's game translate into the playoffs? Will the physical playoff defense affect his scoring and playmaking? And will Tyrese's defense become more of a liability? Now throughout this season, the foundation of Halliburton's game has been his pace. The Indiana Pacers this year have been one of the best transition offenses across the league. And this is where I think Tyrese does his best work as a playmaker. Over again. When pushing the ball, Halliburton is very willing to give up the ball early and make the simple play. And many of Tyrese's dimes come from him just making the simple reads that open up right in front of them. And while many of these dimes aren't super flashy, it does lead to high quality offense. Take this play for example. Tyrese is pushing the ball on the break and he pulls these two defenders. And this backside defender is also sliding down to cover the shooter, which opens up the simple pitch across to Andrew Nemhart, who has a runway to the rim. This is after a made basket. And as Halliburton is advancing the ball, notice how he has his head up reading the floor. And Philly is late to get matched up, which leaves this easy pitch ahead and bucket. Now, many people may just chalk these plays up to bad defense, which on paper may be true, but it's also extremely hard to guard modern NBA offenses in transition. Pretty much every team today constantly has four or more shooters on the court plus multiple guys who are also comfortable putting the ball down and playing downhill. So the margin for error for defenses is extremely small, and that allows unselfish and high IQ point guards like Halliburton to rack up countless of easy assists each game. Now, on top of Tyrese's willingness to make the simple play, he's also a really deceptive and crafty passer. Halliburton is elite at using his eyes and body to manipulate the defense and set up wide open looks for his teammates. On this play, you'll see Miles Turner creeping behind the defense. And as Halliburton whips this pass, notice how he's going to slightly turn his head to freeze these three defenders, which gives Turner way more airspace on the catch. This is also a nice time here, where Portland is scrambling back after a turnover, and Tyrese is going to freeze this defender by turning his head and selling this pass across to the wing, which opens up this wide open dunk at the rim. Now, when playing in transition, Halliburton is also a lethal scoring threat. If nobody picks him up as soon as he crosses half court, Tyrese is going to pull the trigger with no hesitation. And while Tyrese this year hasn't been the most accurate three-point shooter off the dribble, he's still a good enough shot maker that the defense has to at least step up and meet him, which in return opens up more of Halliburton's passing. So on the break, I think Halliburton is easily one of the most dynamic playmakers across the league. His willingness to make the simple play, along with his ability to create opportunities with his manipulation, is going to make him a handful for any defense trying to guard him in transition. But in the playoffs, the game does tend to slow down, and I think Halliburton's going to be playing in the half court at least slightly more than he was in the regular season. Now, Tyrese is still a really dynamic playmaker in the half court, and this is where he tends to lean on his height, length, and athleticism to create passing angles. Halliburton at times can be a really wild and unorthodox passer commonly leaving his feet and waiting till the very last second to get rid of the ball. But because Tyrese is such a long and athletic playmaker, he's able to break a lot of these unwritten passing rules. You'll see him working off this ball screen. And as he draws two defenders towards the ball, Halliburton is going to simply elevate up and deliver this dime over the defense. And then along with Tyrese's wild and athletic style of passing, he also has a really good feel of the entire court. Being able to read and pick apart the weak side of the floor, as well as use his eyes and body to manipulate the defense the same way he did in transition. You'll see him again here briefly pull two defenders out beyond the three. And Halliburton from here is going to lift up and turn his body, selling this pass across the court which freezes this defender, setting up this dime at the rim. 
so whether it's in transition or the half court, Tyrese has definitely established himself as one of the best passers across the league. But one of the biggest reasons why Tyrese is such an elite playmaker is his ability to be a scoring threat. When playing out of pick and roll, Halliburton's ability to pull multiple defenders towards him is what opens up all these passing leads. Over the past two years, teams have respected Tyrese's ability to score off these ball screens by commonly throwing doubles, hard hedges, or having the big step up to meet Tyrese at the level of the screen, which again allows Halliburton to pick them apart with his passing. Out. Here's Siakam teeing up a three. But the question I have is will teams guard him like this in the playoffs? Because defensively, when you're guarding a player like Halliburton who can both score and pass, you kind of have to pick your poison. Do you want to throw aggressive coverages at Tyrese and force him to be a passer? Or do you switch and run more softer coverages, forcing Halliburton to beat you as a score? Now with Tyrese's scoring, it all comes back to his three-point shooting. Over half of Halliburton's field goal attempts this year have come from behind the line. And this year, Halliburton is attempting over five pull-up threes per game, which is the fourth most across the league. But of anybody who's attempting at least five pull-up threes per game, Halliburton has the lowest overall field goal percentage at just 34%, which I'm not going to say is necessarily a bad number, but it's also nothing to write home about. So in the first round against Milwaukee, we could see them open up with a drop coverage and take their chances with letting Halliburton rise up into pull-up threes. And the Bucks could also switch these Halliburton ball screens and live with him just playing one-on-one. -on -one. One small weakness I do see with Halliburton's game is that he's not the most aggressive downhill scorer. Statistically, about 26% of Halliburton's total field goal attempts are at the basket which is on the lower end compared to the rest of the league. Now in spots, Tyrese can be a pretty dynamic slasher. He's good at leveraging his outside shooting to pull the defense out to then create attacking angles. When slicing through gaps, Halliburton also likes to use these low pickups, where he gathers the ball at ankle level, then uses his next two steps to extend all the way to the rim. You'll see him here get the defense leading by pushing the ball to his right hand. Then he's going to flow into this pickup with his next step and knife through all the way to the basket. Now when finishing around the rim, Tyrese at times does struggle with physical defense. There's many times where he avoids contact and settles for these pushed out extended layups. And again, Tyrese doesn't really get to the basket a whole lot. Per a game, Halliburton is averaging exactly four field goal attempts at the rim, and he's almost doubling that with his three-point attempts. And when looking at the film, Tyrese does tend to hunt these pull-up and step-back threes in isolation. And this is where I begin to have mixed feelings, because Tyrese is for sure a really talented shot maker, and he's got the ability to get hot and shoot anyone out of the gym. But that tough shot making can also be a double edged sword because while Halliburton does have the ability to get hot and carry the Patriots offense in spurts, there's also the risk of him turning cold and shooting you out of the game. And players like Halliburton who have a healthy shot diet of these long, off the dribble, and contested pull ups tend to be pretty streaky shooters. And the perfect example of a player like that is Trey Young who like Tyrese is also a really talented passer and has a heavy shot diet of these long contested threes. And we've seen Trey have some really good and rough postseason moments. And I think for Trey, it all really boils down to how consistently can he knock down outside shots because that's what opens up the entire floor for the rest of Young's game. And I think the same thing is also going to apply to Halliburton. If he can punish the defense for playing drop or switching by being a constant scoring threat, that in return is going to draw out more aggressive coverages. And that's going to open up Halliburton's playmaking, which I think is truly the best part of his game. Now when switching over and looking at Halliburton's defense, I think this is another great part of his game. On one hand, I think Tyrese's length and quickness can make him a pretty disruptive on-ball defender. Being able to slide and keep the ball in front, to then extend up and use his length to alter the shot. And those physical tools carry right over to Halliburton's off-ball defense, where he has the length and speed to quickly cover ground and get in passing lanes. 
but at the same time, I do think Tyrese has some weaknesses as a defender. When defending on the ball, Halliburton at times can be pretty unengaged. Tyrese in spots does have a hard time navigating through and around screens. And he also has problems guarding quick and shifty guards out in open space. You'll see him here defending Emmanuel quickly out on the break. And notice how upright Halburn is here. Then he completely opens up his stance and sells out by swiping down into a foul. And in the same vein, Halburn can also fall asleep at times when defending off the ball. There's many times where Halburn gets caught in no man's land and loses track of the offense cutting behind him. This Grizzly in his first year and that's it. But I think Halliburton's biggest deficiency is going to be his strength. Tyrese definitely has a hard time switching up and guarding bigger wings and votes. Players with a size advantage usually have an easy time establishing low post position on Tyrese and generating comfortable shots over him. And that lack of strength also carries over to Halliburton's perimeter defense, where he has a hard time bumping and moving ball handlers off their driving line. And that lack of physicality also causes Halliburton to avoid contact and instead take these swipes at the ball. You'll see him here closing out to the perimeter. And instead of sliding and putting his body in front of the ball, Halliburton elects to go for this reach around steal, which he doesn't get and leads to an easy two points. So overall, Tyrese Halliburton is definitely a really dynamic playmaker and scorer, but I do think he also has some flaws in his game. And throughout a 7 game series, teams get plenty of time to target and pick out those weaknesses. So over the next few weeks, we're going to learn a lot about Halliburton's game. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you think we're going to see from Tyrese Halliburton in the postseason. The kids here.